In this video, I'm going to show how to swap out an empty keg detector on a bottoms up long draw system. Uh, this empty keg detector, the float keeps getting stuck in the down position. So the first step is to disconnect the keg. In this case, it is a keg of Coors Light. Place it in a pot or bucket of clean water and proceed to the dispenser to purge all of the beer out of the line. At the dispenser, you're going to press the prime button, which is in the bottom left hand corner. Slide the slider down on the cup coupler. On the circuit board, you'll see four green lights around the start stop button. You press the start stop button and beer will start to flow. Once beer starts to flow, you wait until it switches to water. It'll start to foam a little bit when it does make the transition. And once it's to clean water, you go back to the keg room to remove the keg coupler from the bucket of clean water. Note that if the drain pan starts to fill with foam, stop the process and wait for it to drain and continue until there's clean water. As you can see, the water is now clear. As you can see, after priming, the float is still stuck down. I have clean water in the entire line. So now you remove the keg coupler from the bucket of clean water and leave it just laying free. Return to the dispenser and we're gonna purge all of the water out of the line. Now back at the dispenser, continue to purge the water out of the line until all of the water is out and there's just air coming out of the dispensing valve and then hit the stop button. The sound that you're hearing is the beer pump continuously trying to pressurize the line. Uh, note that the line is still pressurized and that the CO2 will have to be shut off. You can shut the CO2 off by flipping the lever that is the beer pump gauge. You'll hear the clicking stop immediately, but be aware that there's still pressure inside of this line. To relieve the pressure, you open up the bleed off on the empty keg detector leaving it open until the bubbling stops in the vessel here. Also note that when you shut off the beer pump regulator, you were shutting off both beer pumps that are on the single panel. Note that this will make it so that the beer that is next to the line in question can't be poured until the maintenance is complete. Now you can see that the bubbling has stopped. Now you can proceed to removing the empty keg detector and replacing it with a new one. To remove the empty keg detector, first press down on the quick disconnect on the shut off. There's a little ring around each one of these fittings. You press the ring in. It allows it to release the tubing for the bleed off. Then proceed to remove the reed switch from the side of the empty keg detector. Using a pair of snips, cut loose the zip tie that is holding the reed switch on. Using a crescent wrench, you can loosen the beer line going out to the dispenser. You can use pliers if that's all you have. Note that water will come out, that's why we purge the beer out so that we don't make a mess. And also note that there is a rubber seal in this connector here that is called the beer washer so you want to save this so now we have the beer line out released we will remove the beer line from the bottom again there's going to be that rubber seal in there rubber seal on this one has stayed in. And now you can use a 5 16 nut driver or an impact. I prefer to use an impact just because it's a little easier, but if that's all you have, you remove these screws completely. Now it's time to grab the new empty keg detector and do the operation in reverse. I have the replacement empty keg detector. 
Step one is to remount it to the panel using either your nut driver or an impact driver. The first screw. Now, the second screw. Replacing the lead off line at the top, making sure to press it in all the way until it's seated firmly. Close the shutoff valve. I'm going to attach the bottom first here. It's got the O-ring seal in there. Get it hand tight. You'll feel the seal seat. Take your crescent wrench, give it maybe a half or three quarter turn. Uh, you make sure it's snug. You don't have to go super tight since it is an O-ring seal. You take the washer, Place it in on the beer line side. Again, screwing it hand tight. Taking a wrench, giving it a half turn. You'll feel when it's nice and snug. Now you can remove the reed switch that's attached to the empty keg detector. It's the replacement. Snip it loose. Shove this in the side. We're ready to repressurize the beer pump by flipping this lever down. Reattach the keg. Opening the lever to allow it to fill back up with beer. While the line's filling, the float is going to be down near the bottom. But as the line starts to fill up and we get the last little air pockets, the float should race right back up to the top. Now we go to the dispenser and prime the beer in and do a couple tests. With the prime button illuminated and the slider in the down position, cover the nozzle with a cup and press the start button to purge the air out of the line, whatever water is left, and getting good beer into the valve. At the start of the flow, it will be very foamy. Note that you do not want the drain pan to overflow, so if necessary, hit the stop button and allow it to drain, and open the valve again until there's clear beer. As you can see in this video, the beer is starting to clear up. Once it is clear, I'll hit the stop button, press the prime button to take it out of prime mode, making sure to slide the slider into the up position before placing it into auto mode. Once in auto mode, test it by placing a cup on the dispenser, making sure that it pours clear beer. And now we will move on to testing. Now that the beer has been primed into the line successfully, to test and make sure that the float doesn't get stuck, we are going to simulate an empty keg. To simulate an empty keg, disconnect the keg in question, leaving the keg coupler laying on the top of the keg like so. Return to the dispenser and pour a beer in automatic mode until you see the empty keg lights turn on. In auto start, place a cup on the dispenser until the empty keg lights illuminate. If the empty keg lights illuminate and then clear themselves, pick the cup and up and place it back down on the dispenser until it stays in empty keg mode. To test and make sure that the float doesn't get stuck in the down position, we can see that it currently is in the down position. We reconnect the keg. Refill the empty keg detector by opening the bleed off. We should see it start to feel with, fill with beer and you can see immediately that the float starts rising to the top. Once it reaches the top completely, close off the bleed off and we have successfully solved the problem.